Joe, do you want me to wait till 05 to? If you don't mind. Okay. Great. Yep. It's two minutes and we'll get going. Right. I I'm sure you've heard people say it oh, a lot of different ways. <laughs> so I know. I We're good? Okay. All right. All right, folks, as a courtesy to your uh, fellow media members as well as uh, coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones if you have not already. Uh, when, asked, when asking a question, please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. If you are joining in on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first and then get to Zoom if time allows. Uh, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Uh, no flash photography as well. Uh, open locker rooms return this year. Locker rooms are open for 30 minutes during the team's practice day press conferences as well as 30 minutes following the end of the cooling off period after games. And this year, we welcome back Hammond Communication uh, for help coordinating the press conferences here in Columbia. Uh, Hammond is the only outlet permitted to shoot press conferences all week. Hammond workers Kyle and Chris are here in the back of the room and will coordinate distribution of audio and video files to all interested media outlets. Additionally, ASAP Sports uh, Transcripts, uh, ASAP tra Sports Transcripts, will provide free transcription services for all press conferences. All right, so let's introduce uh, uh, our head coach here from Presbyterian College, Coach Laura Sharp. She's in her sixth year leading the Blue Hose. They were the Big South Tournament champions this year. She is joined by sixth-year center Brianna Brady in the middle and sophomore guard Tilda Crockvist. We will start with uh, Coach making an opening statement. Then we will have questions for the players and then come back to questions for the coach. And then if time allows, we will do uh, questions uh, via Zoom. So we'll start with Coach, an opening statement. I'm so proud of our team and the strides that we made over the month of February and the beginning stages of March. Those of you that have followed us know that we had a bumpy up and down season. Some of you probably saw us play in, in early December down here and we just grew and grew and we bonded together as a coaching staff and, and as a team and, and because of that we are dancing and we're thrilled to be doing it for the very first time and as you know there's only one first time to do a first thing and uh, we're excited to represent the, the Clinton community, and we feel like we have had so much love and support from alums and everybody, and uh, we're excited to get back to work. We were, you know, for a, a week, we really just did player development, and, and we were kind of riding our wave, and so finally, when Selection Sunday came, we felt like we could really put our heads down and get right back to work. All right, we'll take questions for these student athletes. Brianna, I just want to welcome you out of Columbia. Um, just kind of take us through the emotions. What have the last couple of days been like? Obviously, first conference championship in program history. Uh, obviously, a quick turnaround, big game tomorrow. Just uh, kind of what are y'all feeling? Um, I think it's just a lot of excitement. Um, it's very new for each and every one of us. So I think that we've been soaking it all in. The coaches have really emphasized soaking it all in, but staying focused. Um, we recently turned the page to an opponent, like Coach Sharp said, like we finally found out who we were playing and whatnot. Um, but as the days on from like getting off the bus um, after the chance, after we won, and then getting off the bus the next day, it was just so much love and support around us. And I think that it definitely brought us closer together um, as a community and in the Clinton community. Um, a lot of people were out there supporting us, and it, it puts smiles on everybody's faces and fills our hearts with love. So I think that it was really good. Um, just to see how many people came around us, and we, we've been enjoying the process, lo loving all the support. Joe? Brian, I'll stay with you. Um, Coach referenced kind of the, the, the strong finish to the season. Mm -hmm. From the players' perspective, what do you kind of attest to that strong finish? I think eight of the last nine games you were, came away as the winner, obviously the conference tournament. What was kind of uh, the inside secret from the players' perspective? Um, I think that it was more so just the connections that we have as a team on and off the court. It definitely brought us together. And, and when we went on that like s couple game losing streak, we definitely 
took a look in the mirror and just tried to bring something to the table. Each each of us bring something different to the table and like improve on little things. Um, we worked on it a lot as a team, just team bonding outside of basketball and trying to grow our connection. I think it really, really helped us on the court and it, it showed in those last games. Um, coming out, we, ha we have a lot of people in our corner and I think it just helps us when we have such good connection on and off the court. You can go right here in front and then we'll go to them back. Tilda, um, obviously first, first Big South championship in, in uh, school history. Also the most single season wins in program history. Um, you guys have won eight of nine since February 10th. If, if you can remember that far back before y'all went on this winning streak, what kind of clicked then for y'all and, and how confident are you guys uh, knowing that you're playing your best basketball at the right time? Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like we all switch. I don't know. I can't really descri describe what happened, but we all just came ready to play. And we all were so connected these past months. And uh, yeah, like you said, we're playing our best basketball. And we're just enjoying the time. We have a lot of seniors in our team. And we're enjoying the, uh, the last couple of games with them. And we have had a lot of injuries and uh, a lot of adversity. and. Uh, I just think this made us cl even closer and um, filled a bigger purpose of playing basketball. We play for those who can't play uh, on the court. Uh, and uh, yeah, we all just fight. We had one goal, and it's been up and down through the season. But yeah, we, we wanted to win, and that's what we did. In the back there. Um, Tilda, after winning the Big South Championship, you were named tournament MVP. Um, you obviously played super great in that tournament. Um, what can fans expect to see from you in the first four games tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, honestly, just playing hard. I mean, it was now a little more than a week we played again, uh, or last time. And I mean, me and the team are just ready to play hard uh, these last couple of games we have together. And yeah, I mean, we, we, we proved ourselves that we are supposed to be here, and we're we just want to play hard, and for me too. I'm, I want to lead the team and play hard and uh, make memories with them. And yeah. Go right there first. Brianna, nine girls for y'all this season have scored in double figures at least once uh, in a game this year. How confident are you as a leader on this team, knowing that if one of y'all isn't scoring, you have a multitude, um, whether it's in the starting lineup or on the bench, that can go out there and, and get y'all a basket when you need one. Um, it gives great confidence, especially knowing that we work so hard on player development and seeing it come through and shine through on the court. Um, it transferring, it, it means a lot, especially when, like as a starter, sometimes my game isn't always, you know, there 100%. And, and knowing that there are, my post players will come in and Mat match my energy or, or exceed my energy and bring something to the table. Like all of us always work on bringing something to the table. So it definitely gives you confidence out there on the floor knowing that you're not, th you're not the only one out there. It's not like all on you. It's not pressure. It's not, it's, it's a team effort. And we make sure that we stay together as a team and, and work this out and pull these wins out as, as a team. Tilda, I'm curious from your perspective, uh, playing here already in this arena, as a perimeter player, as a shooter, how much does that help you confidence-wise going in, knowing that you are playing in a, a large arena, but you already kind of have a feel for the shooter's eye and kind of the feel of the arena uh, when you're trying to run the offense? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely good. I mean, it's confident we have played here before, and obviously that helps. I just feel like, I mean, yeah, we, it's, it's going to be like any other game. Like, we need to come and execute what we do. and. Like we just talked about, like if someone doesn't have a game, a good game, like someone else will have it. So I just think we have confidence in like everybody can score and everybody is a threat. And yeah, obviously we have a good chance. We have um, played here before, and I think that's definitely is a benefit for us. But yeah, we're just gonna go out and play hard and do what we can do. Any other questions for student athletes? Yep, in the back. Um. Bree, finding out that you're playing against Sacred Heart on Sunday night and then such a quick turnaround with the game on Wednesday, how can you prepare and like how, how prepared are you for this game? Um, I, feel, I feel prepared and confident um, because my coaches and our coaching staff took their time to make us prepared, if that makes sense. Um, 
them working hard on a scout getting us ready and us understanding the game plan and the assignment, I think that that helps. Um, and on my part, just making sure that I'm resting my body and, and recovering well and then executing and, and really getting those mental reps if I'm not on the court and really getting going hard in my reps when I am on the court just to execute the scout. Um, that's something that we've been very emphas emphas er, emphasizing very much uh, in these past couple of days is just making sure that um, we're executing the game plan. And um, I think that we all take our, do our part and, and our even our trainer, like she does her part as far as trying to make sure that we're ready our bodies and it's our job to get our minds right. And, um, and the coaches put out a great, you know, product out there on the floor for us to execute. So I think that we just take the time and, and it was a quick turnaround, but I think that it was, we're, we were prepared for it. And, and I think we're prepared well for the game tomorrow. Joe? I'll have you both answer. I'll start with you, Tilda. Um, I don't know how much you've been able to dig into Sacred Heart necessarily um, you know, with such a quick, you know, quick turnaround. But from each of your perspectives, whether it's from the perimeter or whether it's from the post, what do you think is going to be the one key to find success tomorrow night and kind of impose your team's will? I think it is just keep doing what we've been doing. Like we said, I mentioned earlier, we've been playing our best uh, basketball during the whole season. So I just think we need to keep building on that. We need to go out and go hard. And uh, yeah, I mean, what we've been working on all year, like now is the time we really need to execute it. One game, like one game and we're out. So we need to do what we've been working on, execute what we've been working on. And yeah, so just that. Yeah, I agree. Um, doing what we what got us here, um, executing our, our side of the ball and um, when we're on offense and then our defense wins games, we've been working hard on defense. Um, so I think that just executing what our um, game plan is on it, on offense and on defense will definitely put us in a spot to be um, successful. And I think that we go out there and we play hard and we control what we can control, we'll, we'll be OK. Any other questions for student athletes? All right, we'll go with uh, coaches for Coach Sharp. Questions, Joe? I'm always interested from the coach's perspective with the first four, such a tight turnaround, 48 hours basically between the selection show and then getting ready to play a game. For you as the head coach, what is the balance between the operational side of travel and lodging and all that stuff versus game planning for Sacred Heart? Well, we, the, the nice thing is, is we had the week in between to kind of get our bearings, get organized. Uh, LaRomeo McKee, our director of basketball operations, I think he put together four different itineraries, which no one asked him to do. That's just the work ethic that he has. And he was prepared for if we were going to fly, if we were going to bus. I think he was all over the bracketology and trying to figure out what we were going to do. And this was probably the easiest option for us to come right down the road. It's great for our fan base. Uh, for our coaching staff, we split the scout up. So we had a coach take offense, a coach take defense, another coach take what we call special teams, baseline, sideline, and personnel. And then I took game flow and kind of what are the tendencies of their head coach and different things, when do they change defenses. And so we teamed it up. And because someone also needs to fast forward and start working on the next scouts too. So we, we put our head downs and work. Uh, you know, we told our kids going in, we're going to work really hard tonight to make sure that we put them in the best position to be successful. And then once we come in tomorrow with a game plan, we need to start executing it right away because you kind of lack maybe one day of prep time. And normally your scouting coach is working a week to two weeks out. And so I think we feel good. I think we know them. Um, I think that, you know, like Tilda said, that we want to focus on what got us here too. And, and we told our team yesterday in practice, we want to copy and paste our Radford defense and bring it tomorrow because Defense travels, when your shot's not falling, when you're in a, a arena, when you're in a loud environment, things are different. Your defense is way more controllable, and Sacred Heart has some really good players that we've got to really key in on, but we need to use our length and wall up and keep them off the free throw line and, and be the best version of PC. Coach, just want to get your perspective. Um, winning eight of, eight of nine since February 10th, just uh, from your view, what, what do you think clicked uh, for your group and, and what has it been like uh, to watch them succeed down the stretch? Well, one thing we've talked about the last few days is what I'm describing as invisible progress. I think that we went on a four game losing streak and we played really well in three out of four of those games. We just didn't win. And so we came back home after I think the, the third or fourth loss in a row and we went around to each player and asked them to write down 
what is one right decision better that they could have made that would have impacted winning in the game before? And because I think you sometimes feel like it's bigger than it is, uh, even if it's 15 points, it still isn't as big as what it seems like. You might be one run away from being in the game. If we would have just closed this quarter out better, started the first half better, whatever it was, and, and I think they did that. And I think that they really, like Bree said, they looked in the mirror, they decided, what am I willing to change? What decision, one better decision am I willing to make? And, and I think we asked on both sides of the ball. One, one thing offensively, yeah. one thing defensively. I don't know if they remember what those things were, but, and then I think that they started doing those things. And I think it's just invisible progress from player development that you're just staying in the gym. This team works, they, they work really hard. I mean, we would, you know, we lost really bad to South Carolina. Those kids went right back home and worked. And there was never, we feel sorry for ourselves. There's 30 points on crutches and on the sideline that we've lost from our roster. And we said too, we, we got where we set our hearts out to go this season, but it looks a lot different than maybe we thought it was going to be. And I think that's what makes it even more rewarding and probably a part of while we're here is we were playing for a bigger purpose. We were playing for those kids that couldn't step on the court because we got the opportunity to play and I got the opportunity to coach and, and we're here and we're going to make the absolute most of it. In the back. Coach, this is your second time sitting up in that chair this season. Um, can you just talk a little bit about how much the team has changed since then um, and how much more this game means to you since that time? Well, the interesting thing about being here is everyone, you know, was asking me before we came and played the undefeated number one team in the country, you know, why are you, you know, playing that game? Why are you playing it the day after this game and this, that, and the other? And, and I answered at the time because I want to prepare my team for March Madness. And I thought we had the team that was more than capable to be in this type of scenario. And obviously being in the first four game, it gives us just another chance to play on this court, play in this environment and get our feet underneath us. And we want to survive in advance. We want to take it one day at a time, one game at a time, one rep at a time, one press offense at a time. We're going to see some press tomorrow. And I, I, I feel like your job as a head coach is to really put your players in a position to be successful. And, and it's, it's been great just scheduling this environment and then being able to play here. It worked out in our favor. And I couldn't have dreamed it up where it would be in the exact location where we'd be playing at. But the quick turnaround playing a high-level basketball team in a, in a great environment was something that, that we've been there and we've done that. And we've kind of done it twice. We played at Kansas State in a big environment also and on, a, on an awesome platform and stage. And they're one of the top teams in the country as well. And, and so I think we're prepared to make a run. Looking specifically at Sacred Heart, uh, obviously prior number three, such a dynamic guard, great scorer. Uh, does she kind of make you adjust anything defensively obviously you're coming off holding I think right for 37 points in your last game so obviously your defense is traveling but what does she challenge your defense specifically uh, with her ability well we have a lot of really great players in the Big South Conference too and so the the way that we need to defend her we've we've defended some of the players in our conference it's she's kind of a blend of we've been telling our players she's a little bit of a blend of three different really good players in our conference so there's no one exactly like her but um, I don't think you can card her with one person. I think she's too good. She, she you know, keeps the ball in her hand so much. I think that one thing that's important for us is we need to bore them to death because they're going to kind of dribble and lull you to sleep. And we've got to bore them to death with our great stance, our great intensity. We call it playing with our wings, with our, our hands out to the side and playing in a really great stance so that we're ready whenever she decides to make her charge at the rim. Um, she's really quick. She's really crafty. She's really good going to the right, um, but very good at the rim. So we've got to do all that we can to keep her out of the paint. All three of you have, have talked about this at some point uh, since you've been up there. But um, logistically, it makes sense for you to be here. But how excited are you um, that the Clinton community is just down the road and, and that they have a chance to come here and support y'all? I'm excited and I'm thankful. I, I'm, I'm thankful that our administration, our president, our athletic director, all of our advancement team, our sports information team, like they are not letting this opportunity go to waste. They've got fan buses coming. They've, um, our selection show was not normal. I mean, you look at other people, they're in restaurants and they're here and, and we had an entire gym full of people. 
And I love that. And I think this program deserves that. And I'm so thankful that we have administration and people that have really stepped up to the plate and made the experience and, and really capitalizing on the 50 miles, 60 miles, whatever it is down the road, um, playing in Columbia. So I'm, I'm very thankful. Questions from here? Yep. I like to put the coaches on the spot. Your players up here with you, uh, obviously both a little bit different perspectives with Brianna coming in as a sixth year to th this year, uh, Tilda coming in as a second year. What have they meant to the program? Obviously, Brianna bringing a lot of experience, but Tilda um, obviously has done a lot in her two-ish years so far. But uh, kind of talk on your players up here a little bit and what they mean to your team right now. Well, first of all, the power of human connection. Like, I, I love them. I, I know that they love me, too. We don't love each other every single day, but we respect each other every single day. And as soon as we step off that court, win, lose, or draw, I think that there's still a strong connection and we're always ready to go right back to work together. And Bree came here uh, when it wasn't cool to play at PC. We, we were struggling and she came here to win a championship. She came back to win a championship. I think she had a lot of fun. We had 13 returners out of 13 players last year on our team. We brought in one new freshman. And I, I just think that she came back here. She filed her appeal to have the opportunity to play with them more. And it's because of that connection that they have with each other. And Tilda uh, has a cool recruiting story. story. Tilda, I got a Twitter DM, evaled her um, film. We Zoomed with her, and she's like, sure, I'll do that. She literally committed on the Zoom, <laughs> sight unseen, and we, told, we knew she was going to be an impact player. We knew she was going to be really good as a freshman, her maturity level, her experience with the national team, and she has came here and helped bring this program to another level. We would not be where we are without either one of these two players, and, and they know that, and they're confident in that, and I know that they're going to come out and play really, really hard tomorrow and do all that, we can, all that they can so that we can survive in advance. They, I can't say enough about the kind of people they are and the kind of students they are, and they've trusted me through the process of losing. I think a lot of times your players start looking around and not trusting you as the head coach, and they've always believed in me, and that will never, I'll never forget that as long as I coach. Just want to get your personal perspective. Since you took the job in April of 2018, this program is steadily gotten better uh, over the last six years and you look back on this year I know it's a whirlwind right now given that you have a game tomorrow but first conference championship in program history most single season wins in program history just um, what has this season meant to you in in your profession and, and um, just your emotions as, as you kind of take a step back and look at what y'all were able to accomplish this year you know, high achieving people sometimes never take a second to be proud of themselves and we did it. I mean, that's just what I keep saying to myself, we did it. I did not do this alone. I did not build this program alone. It's came with, uh, you know, support from PC and administration. It's come from coaching staff working really hard, um, but it, it is very rewarding. Um, I think back when Danny Sterling, who was the athletic director that hired me, I had, when he called me to see if I'd be interested in the job, I had to Google the school. I'd never heard of it. No one knows what a blue hose is. I wasn't familiar with the Big South Conference. But when I came on campus, it was a fit for me. Uh, you know, buildings aren't going to hug you. The people make a place. And I knew that this was somewhere that I could win. I loved the challenge of being able to make history somewhere. I loved that there wasn't – there was – success in the program but not championship level success and when I took the job I knew that this was a place that I could win a championship and so being able to say that we've done it and that's what every recruit that I ever recruited I told them and I keep this net in a vision box in my office and I told every single one of them there's only one first time to do a first thing and when you're signing up to come here you got to understand that this is what we're setting out to do and it's going to be hard it's going to be gritty it's not pretty turning around a program and, but, but we did it, and it is so rewarding, and I'm, I'm thankful, and I'm, I'm proud of, of, to be a part of PC, and I'm so thankful that Danny Sterling took a chance on me. I was an old JUCO coach. I was an assistant coach at the Division I level, and he hired me because he said I've probably swept the floor before, and I've probably functioned with smaller staffs, and, and that's why PC has been such a great fit for me. And if there's no other questions here, we'll go to uh, Zoom. I believe we've got a question there from uh, Jeff Hartzell. Uh, Jeff Hartzell, uh, 
you are on. We'll get you unmuted. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, it's Jeff Hartzell from the paper down in Charleston. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we've got you. Brianna, I wanted to ask you, um, you're in the same tournament as Caitlin and Camilla and Angel. What does that mean to you? It means a lot. Um, just knowing that there are such great players around um, and we've, we've made this school or put this school on the map as far as something that, they, that they've never done before. It means so much to me. Um, they're great players and I'm just as, as just as much of a fan as, as anybody else because they've made such big, a big face for the women's basketball um, across the nation. And I think that in us doing this, making, making this big accomplishment, it definitely adds to that success and, and it, it doesn't go unshown, but I'm excited to be out there and to play with the big lights and play with these players and um, just be a part of this point in history. Um, it's, it's a great feeling and I'm, I'm so glad that I'm a part of this. All right. Can you tell me, uh, was there a moment this week or in recent days when it hit you that, oh, this is a big deal what we're doing? I'm, I mean, being completely honest, I don't know if I've wrapped my head around the fact that we won a conference championship. Um, it's still, it's still, I'm still in awe just in the fact that when you achieve a goal that you have, um, coming back, like I had one goal in mind and, and I really, really wanted to accomplish it. And the fact that I did that, I'm very proud of myself and the team. So I don't think that I've really wrapped my mind around it, but I understand that the moment is big and I understand that we are in a place that PC has never been before and that it's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to be out there. So I don't I don't know if my mind has really wrapped around the whole, whole situation, but I know that I'm going out there to play a basketball game that I've done once many times before and I'm gonna go out there, play hard and, and show, put it, we're gonna put a good product on the floor, so. I have one more question for you, one for Coach. Uh, I know you have Sacred Heart first. How eager are you guys to see the Gamecocks again and show them how much you've improved uh, since you played them the first time? Yeah, I think we're really eager to go out there and, and play. Um, like we said, our, our team was different in the preseason and in the beginning. We, we're a much different team. Um, and I think that it definitely puts a little bit more uh, support under our feet, just knowing that we've played them once before, being able to go back and watch films, see what worked, see what, what didn't, um, and just show that we aren't just the PC team that came out here in December and, and we were kind of, it was a different, it was a different atmosphere for us. So, and you could, I think you could see that when we were playing, it was, it was just different. Um, being out there playing with them. So I'm, I'm excited to go out there and I'm e I am eager, especially to go out there and just show that we, we're a different team and that we've made progress. It, it's it's a, a lot different team than the preseason and I'm excited to go show that, that progress that we've made. And coach, you mentioned your history as a JUCO coach and D1 assistant. But what do you think of the how far the women's game has come and the stars they have now and for PC to be even a, a small part of that? What does that mean? I love it. I, I, I'm so, you know, I love all of the media, whether it's good, bad, all of it I think is good for the women's game. And people might disagree with me, but all the great coaches, Dawn Staley is, is probably the greatest coach in the game. And the way that she represents women's basketball and talks about it and everything that she has done to grow the game is, is great. And I want to be like that too. I want to be someone that grows the game and gets it out here and tries to do everything that I can to to make women's basketball great because of all the people that came before us and invested and all the women that played with no scholarships and the coaches that played with no salaries and they volunteered and they had no locker rooms and and now we get full scholarships and we get amazing salaries and contracts and media support and I am so thankful to be in March Madness where we can give our name a little notoriety and give our college of a thousand students some publicity. I think we're the smallest ever to play in the NCAA tournament. We want to be the smallest to ever win an NCAA, NCAA tournament game. And we're so looking forward to the challenge. All right. Thank you guys and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And no other questions. That will conclude the press conference. A reminder, uh, Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. 
and transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us, and ladies, good luck. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thanks, guys.